Hello everyone. Welcome back to another reading from Papa's Comic Books and Coffee. Today we're going to be reading, are you ready? Peter Porker, The Spectacular Spider-Ham, issue number one from, where is it, from May of 1985. Went for 65 cents back then. This book is by Stephen Skeets and Mark Armstrong. All right, and as a reminder, if you're interested in this book, it is available on my eBay page, Papas-Comic-Books. All right, well, let's get right into it and see what we can find out. Oops. One more time. All right. Of course, Stan Lee presents Peter Porker, the Spectacular Spider-Man. Wasn't much of a crime I came upon last night. Just a couple of petty thieves knocking over an all-night grocery. But at least my automatic camera got a good shot of this beautiful right cross I threw. The mysterious island of Ductor Doom. All right, here we go. In fact, all these pictures are great. Good composition, excellent focus, the works. Even an old tightwad like J. Jonah Jackal ought to be willing to shell out a pretty penny for these beauties. Been quite some time since I made my extra money via shuttering skills. I could use the money to refurbish my wardrobe. My clothes are getting so threadbare you can actually... Whoop, hey... Watch it with those overgrown feet. What's the big idea, Porker? This is a news office, not a flop house. If you want to lie around on the floor, do it at home. What are you doing here anyway? No, don't answer that. Got something I want, I want to say to the, these three other jerks first. And what I want to say is you shouldn't be goofing off any more than Porker. You're junior trainees, for crying out loud. You're here to learn the newspaper business, not fool around with the pocket video games. And can this obnoxious racket you're making it so nobody around here can even think straight? Phew. Offhand, I'd say J. Jonah is not the best of moods. <clears throat> now, as for you, Porker, you better have a darn good reason for being here. Well, I, uh... Speak up, will you? I haven't got all day. What are these, some pretty pictures you're planning to sell me? Oh, come on. What are you trying to pull, a fast one? These are all of Spider-Ham, and he isn't even fighting a supervillain. You know how I hate to give that super fool free publicity? No way am I going to run these photos in my newspaper. But perhaps it's just as well you're here anyway. I'm going to need a photographer on this important assignment I've decided to take my trainees on. Say what? Where are we going? Let's get that in frame. Okay. To investigate the St. Croix trapezoid. Now grab your hats and let's go. The St. Croix? What? What in heaven's name are you talking about? Good grief. What's wrong with you, Porker? Don't you even keep up with current events? The St. Croix, who sits in a section of the Caribbean where planes have been vanishing, simply disappearing. Oh, you mean something similar to the Bermuda Triangle? Yes, that's it. Now, come on, all of you. I've called ahead, got a rented plane at the airport, gassed up and waiting. Guess our boss man couldn't be bothered with intros, so allow me, man. <clears throat> The snobby rich kid is J. Jonah's own nephew, J. Jeremiah Jackal Jr. Big years, here we known by Bunsen, Bunny. And me, I'm the inner city representative Upton Adam Stray. Uh, uh, pleased to meet you. This may be a dangerous assignment, men, but as a reporter, you've got to learn to laugh in the face of danger. Oh, wow. Does he honestly expect us to ride aloft in this crate? Doesn't it even look like it'll get off the ground? Uh, 
However, well, here we are, more or less right at the center of it all. Gads, but this is boring. Nothing around here looks the least bit interesting. But just then, amazing, though it is obviously aeronautically impossible, we seem literally to be flying sideways. It's like a force has taken hold of us, pulling us down toward that small volcanic island. Aha, just as I surmise, the stress of proceeding in one direction while being pulled in another is producing massive structural damage to our craft. I knew it. I just knew it. This plane is worse than worthless. And at the same moment, well, will you look at this? Our latest catch is breaking apart in midair. Well then, you might as well let it go. We really don't need it anyway. I've already got enough planes cluttering up my hideout and more than enough passengers to perform my experimenting upon. And so, phew, that mysterious force seems to be gone. We're safe now. Really, sir, must you be so dense or have, to, have you simply failed to notice? Even without the force, we're still coming apart at the seams. Whoops. Maybe this will help, though how long e even my webbing can hold us together, I have no idea. Hey, it looks like we're going to make it to that island after all, but according to the laws of physics, this shouldn't be happening. At this velocity, friction from the air itself should have caused our damaged superstructure to break apart in various... <clears throat> Shut up and grab onto something. This is going to be a rough landing and a they crash. Dag. Last time I let a jive jackal do the driving. Hmm, an adhesive-like substance adhering here and there to the fuselage. Now, where did that come from? Hey, bro, you coming with us or what? Appears we must explore the stupid island, see if there's a way back to civilization. Don't worry, I'm right behind you. Prior to our landing, Porker seemingly possessed a smaller amount of irrational fear that the rest of us, I wonder, could have had something to do with the sticky stuff. Presently. Phew! This primordial growth so thick it all but completely blocks out the rays from the sun, making it not unlike night here. I don't like this. Feel like I'm being watched. And what are those strange sounds? Uncle Jonah! What happened? Actually, I haven't the foggiest. Something whizzed by and bonked him upside the head. Whatever it was, it proceeded so quickly my optical apparatus failed to obtain any information concerning its physical nature. If only we'd ung bung bang bang boom bong. Good gravy, whatever got Jonah also got them, and now my spider sense is tingling up a storm. Obviously something's coming after me too. Quick reflexes save him. Phew! Woo he, that was a close a bit too close. Huh, what's a kangaroo doing here in the Caribbean? Or the Caribbean? They're usually only found in and around Australia. How? Oop, my spider sense again. It's bunk. Ugh. Blew it this time, Pete. Don't just stand there staring, you kick-happy fools. Pick them up. Our boss will be glad to meet the idiots who have dared invite, invade our island. Or ultimately... Ooh, my head. Did anyone get the license number of that truck? Well, well, I see you finally decided to regain consciousness. Allow me then to welcome you to the royal court of the kangaroos. It must be a kangaroo court. Wow, who is this dude? Considering the presence of all these kangaroos, perhaps underneath his metal exterior, this is a duck-billed platypus. No, no, I recognize him from certain news clips I've seen. He's no platypus. He's just an ordinary duck. Just ordinary? You dare call the great duck door doom an ordinary duck? You must really be trying to get on my bad, bad side. Oh. Still, I must admit it probably seems strange my, me having all the marsupials hanging out on my private island. 
I met these new down underlings of mine rather than by accident, actually. It all began soon after my most recent battle against the stupid supergroup, the Fantastic Fur. Though I hate to admit it, those four disgusting do-gooders were some of, somehow able to defeat me. And more than that, they were also able to attach anti-gravity pods to my metal uniform and send me floating off into outer space. When I finally drifted back to Earth, it was in the outback of Australia that I landed. The way outback. Seeing me appear out of the sky, the natives' giant kangaroos mainly looked upon me as though I were a god. So when I finally came back here to my island, I of course brought a number of my newfound friends with me. After all, they are strong, hardy, obedient, and loyal. Plus they have a couple of other attributes which have proven invaluable to my research. But enough about them. Now it's time for you five to go on trial. Trial? But, but... You are accused of trespass. The evidence is that you were found on my island, and this verdict is that you are all guilty. What kind of trial is this? We didn't even get a chance to defend ourselves. Of course you didn't get a chance. Haven't you figured it out yet, you ninnies? This isn't just any court, any sort of court. This is a kangaroo court. You are sentenced to be used sooner or later as guinea pigs in my latest experiment. Now get them out of here, take them downstairs, and toss them in a cell. Koof, oof. Say, look at this. There's a number of well-dressed individuals in the next cell. Must be the passengers from all those airlines upstairs. Hey, can any of you help us? What's this doc doctor dude up to? What sort of bad trip have we stumbled into? Uh, where am I? Do I own a condo? Where's my next mail coming from? You're never going to get anything out of those geeks, believe me, you. Doom's already taken them up to his lab and performed some sort of experiment on them. Don't know what the experiment is, but it certainly messed up their minds. Luckily, though, there are still a few of us left who haven't yet been experimented on. All right. I want you and you to come with me. Oh, he's pointing at me? Guess it's finally my turn to go and have my mind put through the ringer. Wish me luck, boys. You got it. All our best, my good man, my good fellow. Presently. I'm beginning to lose my patience. This group had better work or I'll... I believe I have some bad news for you, boss. The kangaroos appear to be reaching into their pouches. Yep, obviously they don't care for, the, for these three any more than they link than they liked the other groups, rats. Now I'm really steamed. Listen, boss, maybe you're putting too much emphasis on the kangaroos who say they're such great judge of rock music. What? You dare? Have you forgotten? Dolt, I'm the one who recognized my mar marsupial's latent musical taste. I'm the one who trained them to be the perfect audience, and I've got to get some of that to see my... And once I get it all, I'll put it to good use to become the most powerful duck in the world. And I did it for one reason, all the big money. Nowadays, rock videos and tripe like that. Now, go bring me those three young kids we just captured. Maybe they'll work out. Therefore, okay, you, you, and you. You're to come with me now. No, you can't. You'll muck their minds. They won't be able to become great newsmen if you muck up their minds. Don't try to interfere, you old fool. Our plans for these brats to take precedence over whatever it is your squawks about. He's unconscious, but otherwise he doesn't seem too badly hurt. And maybe it's just as well he's out cold. Now I'll be able to go and save the kids without giving away my secret identity. I'll leave my clothes and camera here in the dark corner. If I'm lucky, no one will notice them. Might as well take the high road. Hopefully up here, I'll be able to slip by Doom's innumerable hen hench ducks without them even knowing I'm around. Look, up on the ceiling, it's 
a superhero here in Doom Island. Somebody scrape him down from there. Uh Uh-oh. That is exactly what I didn't want to happen. Now that I can't easily defeat these bozos. Still having to fight these foul creatures is going to slow down progress. And that means I may very well not get to the kids in time. Meanwhile, I still don't understand how these cats work. Do they really give the wearer musical abilities? Good gravy. Don't you remember anything I've already explained these two dads to to you once? Those hats, as you call them, have nothing to do with musical skills. All they do is give the subjects electrical shocks so that they scream and jump and jerk all around. You know, act just like they're singing and dancing. Then I add a little computerized electronic music to their background, and voila, I've created a rock group. Now all I need to find three subjects who scream and jump around in a way acceptable to the kangaroos. Once that happens, I want you to start filming so I can make one of these stupid videos something I can tell sell to TV. Uh-oh. Sorry, boss, but it looks like you failed again. Boo. Drat, drat, double drat. And at the same instant, there, that's the last of them. And there's the entranceway to Doom's royal throne right up ahead. Wow, a superhero dares invade my private domain? Get him, my kangaroos. Of all the stupid, I've really been a prize chump forgetting about all about these giant hoppers. Extended to much energy fighting, too much energy fighting those ducks. And now, observe the doctor's attention is directed toward the arena of action. And he must have thrown that switch deactivating these devices. We weary these our is our own our chance to escape. <clears throat> oh, where am I? Who am I? Come on, man, snap out of it. You're acting as crazy as those adults downstairs. Frightfully sorry, I'm back on the up and out about. Listen, though, is there something you you wish to do? Ooh, power pack. Star is. We're getting out of here. That's what we're going to do. Being a duck built in imitation of your natural volcano, there should be a vent at the apex of this structure. We'll get out that way. Hey, wait, just the smallest increment of time. A giant electromagnetic must be magnet must be what Doom explo- employed to pull those planes out of the sky. This provides me with a procedural hypothesis. You two attempt with all of the resources to turn that slab of porous iron a full 180 degrees. Simultaneously, I'll direct myself downward, see if I can find the source of the current which activates the magnet. Meanwhile, in the basement, why am I always the one who gets bopped? You'd think the fates had something against me or something. Hey, where's Porker? Looks like someone broke him out, and that ingrate didn't even bother to wake me up. Sounds like something big going on upstairs, like a huge Donnybrook or something. Maybe I'd better get up there and check it out. Good grief. Those cocoons, these ducks are wrapped up and sure look familiar. Don't tell me. Spider-Ham has somehow made the scene. Then, great jumping banner headlines. Yes, do it. Bash him in the atoms. Logically, this is the proper switch. Rather not terminate at this critical point, sure hope my compatriots succeeded in their endeavor, or else Spider-Ham will be sorting a two-dimensional head any second now. Ah, yes, the desired result has been obtained. And furthermore, somebody get me down from here. Diligently done. You two, now observe this additional phenomenon, i.e. the present headcock status of the kangaroos. You ain't the only one with ideas, rabbit. Dig this. The doohickey the do twisted to put music to our wigglins, like they say turnabout is fair play. An excellent ploy, my friend. If that is an uproar, was what you were after. Look, we finally found our rock star. Hey, what are you doing? No. Don't. Film me. I, I, I want to be a star. I want to work behind the scenes. 
Who would have thought it wasn't a group that kangaroos wanted? It was a solo act. No, no, quit filming and get me down. I don't want to be a celebrity. I want to rule the world. Come on, this is our chance to free those other passengers. Then get off this crazy island. Porker, where have you been? Why aren't you snapping your shutter? That's what a good photographer would be doing. But you guys are headed in that direction. Does that mean we're escaping? <clears throat> Listen, pig, we came here to find a story, and this right here may just be the biggest story of the year. Now start clicking away with that camera of yours, or you'll never work for a newspaper again. Okay, okay, click, click. In-depth editorial plus exclusive pics, a reclusive rock star. The hot Caribbean sun shined brightly upon our modest aircraft as we slowly banked down toward the picturesque island. Recording private. Blah, blah, blah. I don't want to be a star. <clears throat> you guys, I just can't stand it anymore. It's been less than a week since we got off his island. I don't want to be a celebrity. And already, Dr. Doom is verifying Red Rock legend. But if I hear that stupid so-called song of his even once more, I'll... I'll... Oh, well, at least here at the office, I ought to be a safe from such shillings. Hi, guys. I suppose old Jonah has been keeping you quiet, busy lately, with a lot of, hey, what's with all this oppressive noise in here? Don't tell me that's, yep, the recorded sound of Dr. Doom. Don't blame us, man. We don't want to listen to it. We are, we abhor his lower class caterwauling as much as you do. You must consider several salient facts, however. For example, our leader's special report upon the doctor's melodic machinist was translated into 17 separate languages. Just what are you getting at? Here, take a look for yourself. Ever since he made all that money, thanks to Doom, my esteemed uncle has become the doctor's biggest fan. The end. The end. Well, that was a good, quick reading of Spider Ham, Peter Parker, Peter Porker, The Spectacular Spider Ham Number One. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, if you like this book, it is available on my eBay page, Papa's Comic Books. Give it a like if you liked it. Give it a thumbs down if you didn't like it. Send me a comment what I can do better, how I can improve. Until next reading. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Out.